Hi, and welcome to Voices from the Left. I'm your host, Craig. Thanks for listening. Our quote for today. To me, the real state of the union is found in how Americans react to current events. Henry Rollins. This episode is a current events chat that I had with Jordan and Heather from 805 Uncensored after recording the Emma Goldman episode. We'll pick it up mid-conversation. And it it actually takes me to another point, which will be uh, a future episode that me and Heather are going to do about Chaplin, Mm -hmm. about how he was exiled from the United States. Um, Not formally, but informally in the sense of, you know, he couldn't come back to the United States because he would have immediately been locked up. So he spent um, a large part of his life uh, in Switzerland Mm -hmm. until his death Hmm. because he couldn't come back to the U.S., Sure. Uh, and this was somebody that was an icon in Hollywood that had right. created United Artists. Like right. somebody that yeah. had a tremendous impact on the development of um, Hollywood and that entire industry. Right. Yeah. Wow. And I think that that just like, that just highlights again like these really important like figures in our history that have just been suppressed right and that goes back to what were you saying that their labor day was founded can you go back over that part labor day was founded as a means to suppress basically right yeah it was a means to distract away from international workers day which takes place in may so grover cleveland creates this holiday you know as like a concession in air quotes to workers like hey we're recognizing the labor movement but we're going to talk about it in september we're not going to talk about it on the day the rest of the world is talking about it because hey we don't want to inspire like some socialist revolution or something (laughs) god forbid that Uh, happen (laughs) but it's like like all of these things they're like predicated on this notion of suppression right Uh we're gonna we're gonna suppress these voices by exiling them or by like making them feel unsafe here or by you know creating our own little you know yeah or in the case of israel straight up just murdering journalists right right like seriously they've killed more journalists than every journalist that died in world war ii yeah they've done that in 10 weeks yeah and that and that like that gets back to that piece about fascism because fascism like it thrives on suppression mm-hmm. suppression of opposition and suppression of the voices and just suppression of information um so yeah yeah exactly and and it's a common theme too that we see with the rise of fascism with deteriorating material conditions you know, it's one country after another. We just did an episode about Argentina. We we're talking about Millet. And yep. and and it's it's driven by the record inflation that's being seen in Argentina, 140 percent, and and escalating. It's so bad. I was actually watching a, a documentary about Argentina. It's so bad that store owners there have have to actually change the prices like every few hours. Wow. They literally are putting stickers Rick. like on top of other <laughs> stickers in a matter of hours. Jeez. And I I think they just went over 200% inflation like this oh week. Oh my gosh. And yes. and also Millet, uh, Ar- Argentina is one of those countries too where a large um, percentage of the population relies on employment from the state. Mm-hmm. And he recently laid off a ton of workers. So Mm -hmm. they're out of work and they're facing uh, northwards of 200% inflation. So um, not to sound dramatic, but you have the recipe there for a civil war. Oh, yeah, (laughs) definitely. I was reading about the people that were getting laid off uh, like either last week or the week before. Mm -hmm. And it's anyone who is hired in 2023, basically, is going to get laid off. It's probably already out of work as we speak. Well, and the and the thing about it is like the the and I'm I'm not sure if I made this comment when we did that episode, but you know, 
one of like the like the key causes of inflation is uh deficit spending right yeah. and they did that by hi- by over hiring all those people in the first place right mm-hmm. and i see again parallels here with the us where we yeah. have so many people that have been hired uh for government jobs over the last 2 to 3 years and you know you look at what's happening in argentina and you're just like like is that what's going to happen here as well um because because inflation will be difficult to keep like cool, like inflation is cooled right now but it will be difficult if you continue to spend 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 which is what they did in argentina so and i don't think that malay has done, has done anything but made it make it worse <laughs> you yeah. know from yeah, what I mean, I... he wants to abolish the central bank. He wants yeah. to transition everything over to U.S. dollars. Yep. Like, how the fuck is that going to work? And he wants to <laughs> privatize all all of the all of the state run organizations and companies. Yeah. He wants to privatize all of it, obviously, because he's a libertarian. So it's like that's you know, and he doesn't even make sense. Like I was reading about what he said about when he was on the campaign trail about how he was going to eliminate all these go- all the government waste, all the positions. <laughs> all he did was combine a bunch of them and make a new agency. Yeah. Like yeah, he then laid off a bunch of people, but you laid still people. have the eight like you still have the agencies, you still have yes. everybody that was hired before 2023. Mm-hmm. Right? And like the agencies that he was combining, I forget what they are now. I read it so you know, long enough ago that I can't remember them, but it was a whole bunch of stuff that all, you know, there's a whole bunch of people that are on, um, like their, whatever their version of like government assistance is. Right. Yeah. And they're, they're cutting that they're firing people that are, would otherwise not be on that. So now they're going to be on that and there's going to be no one to do the work right there'll be less people to do the work to help those people get to get the, the assistance they need right right it's a recipe for disaster like you said recipe for well, civil war down there yeah and then you have the fact that Millet has already changed the structure of argentina's military mm. mm-hmm. uh for the like a dramatic shakeup for the first time in over 20 years and so mm-hmm. that's one of the biggest indications of fascism too sure. is when you start changing generals and when you start bringing in people in the military that are subservient to the state and specifically uh your policies right mm. so it's it's scary stuff yeah yeah no doubt um you know i was reading one other thing about the just some of the stuff he was doing there was a law passed in like 2001 or 2002 in Argentina about um, selling books. And there was like a, a set price that everyone had to sell specific books at. Mm -hmm. And the idea from my understanding, I read into it a little bit was so that you couldn't have, you know, somebody like Walmart sell a book for two cents right and the the you know mom and pop bookstore down the street can't sell it for two cents because they can't buy it for for one cent (laughs) right so the law was put in place to protect small business right small business owners and he's getting rid of that because he thinks that that is somehow going to fix the inflation this bookstore thing like of course i mean that yeah that (laughs) checks out he's an anarcho-capitalist right yeah yes it's just uh it's i mean like like outwardly too like the fucking guy is like wearing like a black and yellow cape right, <laughs> like, right. Just, this guy's this guy's a like this is the head of state right of the second yeah. largest economy in south america right yeah he's like a cartoon he is a he is like a cartoon. He's like That's a total sure. cartoon. That's like, how I see him. He's he's going to campaign rallies with a fucking chainsaw. <laughs> Did he really? Yeah, because that he's like yeah. he's cutting government spending. Cutting government spending. Oh my god. That is so so awful. So cringe. Just oh. Oh, I'm sure there are people eating it up. <laughs> Obviously well, since and, he got elected. Because they're so and, desperate. Yeah. 
But then you, I mean, but again, like it correlates that to the U.S. Like, what do we have here? We have like <laughs> the Republican candidates. Like, remember when that the one guy played tennis and that was like his his debate warm up and like the video <laughs> went the oh video God. went viral of him like rapping and and he's like a big supporter of Trump. So it's like it's <sighs> that cartoonish. Yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, uh, appeal with very little policy <laughs> and and a lot of fascist ideas. Right, behind. right. Well, did in addition to <laughs> in addition to rolling his cronies into the military, did Malay also make changes to the police force or put more funding into mm. into the police force? I <laughs> hadn't read that, but I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, I didn't hear it either, but I'm it makes sense. That's what all capitalists do <laughs> right yep. yeah uh, and you guys were talking about um about getting on lists yeah right yeah so it made me think of when they dropped those uh rico charges against the stop cop city protesters yeah because yeah. they wrote in there that a cab is now um well essentially yeah. gets you on a list if you use that there was a number of symbols. Like I, I think yep. you couldn't even use like the raised fist, which was right? like, which was like you know the symbol of Black Lives Matter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <clears throat> you can't. Um, I think the the three one three uh, one two the three arrows. Oh, oh yes, the three arrows. Yeah, basically anything that's uh, considered an anti-fascist symbol, it seems like, which is you know just so indicative that's, of that's, what the state's priorities are. That's too. That's too on the nose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. I mean, what uh, Tortuguita was was shot over fifty times. Right. Yep. Just insanity. Insanity. For. Being in a in a forest, uh, occupying, what well, I think he was in a treehouse or something. Yeah, just murdered, like right. a state sponsored execution. Yep. And what do they and, do? They double down on it. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. They're just like, well, yeah, no, we're just gonna make it worse by not letting them. You know, you know, we're gonna take our boats in secret, basically. Right at 3 a.m. after everybody went home tired from talking all day, right, and we're gonna, um, you know, pr- try and prevent the petitions from being signed to get the to get it on a referendum instead of the city council just being able to pass the funding, right? Yeah, uh, and, and that's and, still and, tied up in court right now, I think. And we'll just consider everybody that's associated with it a domestic terrorist, right? Yeah, that's the most bonkers part, right? I think is put saying they're yeah. they're terrorists. It's like no, no, nothing could be further from the truth, you know. Well, and it just it just sets like such a dangerous precedent and standard because yeah. mm-hmm. it like it really opens the door, right? Like what 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 isn't terrorism? Right, exactly. Like yeah, is if the government just starts seizing an entire block of homes. And and we're like, hey, you can't do that because we live here. Are, are we going to become terrorists? Right. It, it certainly seems yeah. that way. The way they were doing shit. Definitely. Um. Yeah. I mean, and then also just like you know, all the all the stuff that's been deployed against uh, environmental protesters around the world, like in the Netherlands, they released water cannons onto protesters, which is exactly what happened during the civil rights movement in the United States. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Of course, there's Standing Rock, uh, which is under the Obama administration, a so-called liberal regime, yeah. so-called liberal president, yeah. right. uh, spraying water in freezing cold conditions in the Dakotas mm-hmm. in Sioux yeah. Territory in 2014. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, this, this is a long history uh, of the state cracking down against uh, environmental protesters, particularly women of color and particularly indigenous Mm-hmm. yeah the uh one other thing i i thought of when you guys were were uh talking earlier is a supreme court case that's gonna be heard this term and that is i think oral arguments are coming up here pretty quick and mm-hmm. that is 
I forget the actual like name of the case, but it's about a law that makes it ill like will make it a crime if you are if you don't have a house and you're trying to sleep like outside, it'll make it a crime to use a pillow. I was just reading about this today. It's just that uh, fucking outrageous or what? A pillow or a blanket. Right. I when I read that, it was like I was punched in the fucking gut. What the fuck has happened to any sense of humanity in this country? It's gone. It's gone. When I read that, I was like, that's it. That I mean, like, I mean, yeah. I think that pretty frequently anyway, but that was like a defining mm-hmm. moment for me. A fucking crime. Yep. To use a pillow or a blanket if you are homeless. I mean, what the fuck? I thank you. <laughs> you know what also I, enrages me, Heather, is all these cities, San Diego included, that's where I'm from, are passing these resolutions where people are not allowed to sleep in their cars. Uh huh. You know, it's it's at that point. It's at the it's at the point mm-hmm. when you're getting resolutions like that, or when. And, and a lot of us already knew this, but it's at the point of criminalizing using a pillow uh, when you realize how many people and, and the Supreme Court taking up the case. OK, yeah, because they could have just not taken it. Right. They could they, they yep. could have they could have said, nah, we'll pass <laughs> all, all of the yeah. religious, the religious people on that fucking bench yeah. Yeah. could have not taken the case. But when when you when you hear about that. You just you just realize how many people want homeless people dead. Like that's what they really want. Yep. They yeah. just want to, yep. you know, like like I, you know, I'm out talking to people every single day, and uh, there are people who have compassion for the homeless, and there are a lot of people who just want them gone. The forced and- the forced relocation is is death is them wishing them to die because because you suggest you suggest like solutions right like here in ventura county we have opened a couple of these project home keys where a a a hotel is converted to a homeless uh not like a shelter it's like actual housing their little studio apartments that they do yeah and uh, but then you have cities like Camarillo was going to do a project home key in a in a hotel that is already occupied. Ninety two percent of the people that live there or that are there are homeless and they're just living there. OK, so, I mean, it would be basically what it is anyway. Right. Mm-hmm. And all these people are like, no, we don't want that here. Well, what do you want? We just want the homeless gone. Well, where would you like them to go? That that I'm so glad you brought that up because I just when I heard about that Supreme Court case, I was so just like that's the pit. Yeah, you know. I sure hope I mean, that's the pit. <laughs> I, I, I don't yeah. know if it'll be worse than that, but it could. Who I knows? Not imagine. You know, I just Heather. It's been in the 30s the past few nights. Here in Ventura County, have you seen oh, yeah. any alerts put out? Have you seen for warming centers, any place yeah. that people can go, any yeah. sort of suggestions for how people can stay warm? No, I haven't seen fucking anything. But what I have seen are homeless folks huddling together. I've seen more homeless people walking, just briskly walking all night long by my house and I realized they're sleeping during the day because they're walking at night because that's the only way that they are not freezing to death. Right. Right. And you're right. No warming centers. And like we were talking about before the episode started, uh, you know, we had flooding, uh, no warning on that, no preparation on that. Uh, you know, I, I, <sighs> which was for, just for context purposes, a historical event for our community in Oxnard mm. and Port Wainimi. We we had areas that received over three inches of rain in an hour, Jesus. which is more rain than we typically get in an entire month. 
and, and we had entire streets uh over 400 homes are destroyed or partially yeah. destroyed and and they're getting nothing yeah, they're they're getting nothing from FEMA uh-uh. i don't understand how PG&E is even like still around yeah like man. That's the one that they started have, the forest fire, right? In they've yeah, started California. multiple fires in California, and then if you go back to 2010, this wasn't a wildfire, but this was an explosion that they mm. caused in the city of San Bruno. Mm. Listeners can look it up, San Bruno 2010, and they were yeah. found completely at fault for that. Um, they were found, of course, at fault for the Paradise Fire in 2018, the campfire, which I think killed 85 people destroyed the entire town, 90% of it, along with the communities of Megalia and Con- um, I'm trying to think of the one that starts with a C right now, Concow or something like that. Uh, but Megalia for sure in Paradise. And they've been, and also just before that too, if your f- listeners are familiar with Erin Brockovich and the work that she did um, when she exposed hexavalent chromium, um, in this town in in, in the Southern California yeah. desert called Hinkley, which PG&E was responsible for that as well. And, and this corporation continues to exist. Um, right. It's fucking asinine that utilities are not public, yep. that we have private corporations that are in control of electricity, water, etc. Um, and that continue to burn down our state. Right. It's just infuriating. Um, and then in Southern California, because PG&E is Northern California now, um, in Southern California, we have SoCal Edison. And then in San Diego, um, we have Southern, uh, we have San Diego Electric. And and once again, these are all private companies. <laughs> yeah. I'm fairly certain all of our water has been privatized also. Yeah. Yeah. And it's going to uh, end gonna and it's only gonna continue as they bring more and more of those desalters online to solve the the water issue uh it just they are gonna continue to privatize it even further right and we're continuing to encourage um people moving into the southwest uh <laughs> have you guys seen how small the Colorado River is yeah yeah. You know how many fucking people it supplies water to? Millions. Tens of millions. It's right? like 40 million people yeah. across some of the major cities in the American Southwest. Yeah. And, what's... and yeah, we encourage people to continue to move to Arizona. Yeah. Well, and <laughs> the original like agreement for the the states in that in in that watershed basically from like i don't know probably a hundred years ago at this point the 20s i'm so glad you're bringing this up 1920s right (laughs) when they signed that agreement at a hundred years ago those states were already using more water than the colorado river could provide yep and it goes beyond (laughs) that too because actually in the they didn't even study the climatic history of the region so in the 1920s there was actually a series of above average years of precipitation. <laughs> and so they've <laughs> been diverting more water because of that study, because of that, because of that cherry picked data Jesus. for a hundred years now. Yeah. Well, like you said, <laughs> that's why it's so small, right? If only there was like a group of people that had occupied this land for thousands of years that knew how to properly take care of it. Yeah. Huh. And maybe we is... should like maybe we should talk to them if yeah. it, you know. Oh, we you know we can talk to them, but they don't have a say anymore because the Supreme Court just ruled last year that uh, they don't have water rights. Right. And also, like, like in California, like California is really trying to like push to consult indigenous voices like did you see they just released like more beavers back into the yeah our waterways or whatever but it all turns into just like a performance you know right right and and at the end of the day are they really like 
are they are they also giving things back to the indigenous people or are they just using them you know yeah i mean it's it's yeah it's, i agree heather it seems like concessions it seems like symbolism yeah. it's like um here in here in ventura county we really re recently renamed the name of uh oxnard beach park right to, to the original chumash name hmm. but it's like what is ventura county actually doing for the chumash population materially yeah. Not a lot. They're not doing anything as far as decolonization goes, right? Not giving right. them any land back, not giving them any self-determination, right? Yeah. No, and yeah. certainly not taking their voices into consideration when it comes to the ecological crisis that's right. unfolding right here in our backyard. Yeah. Um, Ventura County is the fastest warming county in the lower 48 states. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Santa Barbara County, which is just immediately to our north, is the second. Yep. Dang. Yeah, and... I was telling people that yeah, today. Ahead. I was saying that I was telling people that today, and they were like, oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. It's, it's happening dramatically. <laughs> Uh, north of Ventura, they are actually finally starting to think about sea level rise along the Pacific Coast Highway, mm -hmm. and it looks like when I've driven through there, they're in the process of raising the road because you know what's so what's so fascinating about these these California King Tide events, which for your listeners that don't know, in, in California every winter. Uh, so we have the normal, you know, ebb and flow of the high and low tides along the beaches. But in the winter months, we get these these king tides that come in. And it's basically um, when the sun and the moon are perfectly aligned. Mm -hmm. uh, it happens like four times a year. Scientists have been studying the California king tides and where they push in to analyze uh, future sea level rise and how we can adapt to it. So these these images that are coming out of like Pismo Beach and Pierpont and Ventura and you know up and down the California coast, Santa Cruz, you name it. Uh the, <laughs> the water is coming into the fucking parking lot and the beach is just completely gone. And this is like this is 20, 25 years that we're talking about. Like this isn't some distant issue. Like this is yeah. something that we're all going to experience in our right. lifetimes. Right. Jesus. And and you know, to to that point and like getting back to this point about like who can like question that, when you talk to any of like our city council people or our elected officials, like they either don't know about that, which is alarming, or they argue with you. Like Jordan, I think I told you about how I got into that big argument on social media in a Facebook group with our council member Gabe Turan about and he told me that I was spreading misinformation about sea level rise in his own city that he's supposed to be fucking representing. And I was like, Gabe, I'm surprised you don't fucking know about these fucking stuff. It's like, what are you doing, Gabe? And 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 getting back to you know you know that that point about like people like the ability to speak up, you mm -hmm. know, and and what happens to people when they speak up on these things? But if if people don't start speaking up, everybody's going to be underwater. Right, right, yeah. and and speaking up, like if you if you have a proper like understanding of history. I, I think speaking up ultimately does decide life and death for so many people because I'm even thinking about what's going on in, in Palestine right now. I've read about a series of educators that are absolutely horrified about the genocide that's being um, you know, perpetrated against the Palestinians, and they're speaking out inside Israel. These people are being locked up in solitary confinement. So the notion that Israel is some, and these are Jewish people, 
for the most part. The notion that, that Israel is some safe haven for Jewish people is absolutely false. Um, I think it was Norm Finkelstein who recently said that that Israel right now is the most dangerous place in the world for Jewish people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, in the idea, also the idea that Israel is the only democracy in the Middle East, quote unquote. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, as utter utter horseshit. <laughs> right. It's, it's not even true. Yeah. Oh yeah. And 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 just going back to the point of um historical revisionism, we don't we don't at all in, in US schools talk about just the draw up of the Middle East. We don't talk about the influence of the British, we don't talk about the Ottoman Empire, we don't right. talk about how was how there was never a consideration into cultures. Shia versus Sunni, for example, none of that is taken into consideration. And then it's just this narrative that's framed as, oh, well, these are just a, you know, this is just a region where people will always be at war. These are people that, <laughs> and, it, and, it, and, it, and in turn, that justifies U.S. imperialism in the region. Right. Because it normalizes that notion among the population. Well, and which is backwards, right? Oh, completely backwards. The colonialism and, is what's forcing that stuff. The British being the British occupying Iraq and Jordan and who knows where and well and and Palestine, right? Until 1948, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Like, you know, it that is what's causing the stress in the region. Right. Get the like, colonial settlers the fuck out of there. Everywhere. Get them out of there. Yeah, I think for me, and, and other leftists might agree with me, they may not. I think the driving force of radicalization is when you have that kind of light bulb moment, when you realize that, that capitalism is the root of oppression. Right. Mm -hmm. Is the root of all of our struggles. Whether you're talking about uh, the labor struggle, whether you're talking about the ecological crisis, whether you're talking about the struggle for LGBTQ people, yep. it's all interconnected to capitalism. Yep. Yep. And, you know, you have the, what started with Britain, obviously, but like you had capitalism coming to be in the late 1700s, early 1800s, right? Mm -hmm. And they said, okay, this is going to be the way we do this now and make shitloads of money. So then they start colonizing all over the place so that they can start exploiting, right? <laughs> Keep exploiting. So then they build, you have the capitalism driving the colonialism, and then you have the colonialism staying in place with capitalism staying on top of it. Right. And then colonialism um, is related to imperialism, but are different concepts. And it's colonialism that drives imperialism because it's the constant desire to expand right. in order to secure empire. Yep. yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, uh, this has been awesome. And uh, I so we're 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 in we're heading down a, a pretty dark path right now. So I kind of want to maybe pull it back a little bit, if for nothing else, my own sanity when I have to listen. <laughs> we often <laughs> to we, edit a, it. <laughs> we, we and Heather have a bad habit of often ending on a somber note. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 hard. It's, it's my hard fault. It's my fault. Nah, I, I do it too. <laughs> um, you know, I we have seen. At the very least, in the in 2023, we saw a comeback of the labor movement, right? Yeah. Yes. Maybe, maybe we can build on that. You know, hopefully we can. Um, you touched on it a little bit when you talked about uh, France Fanon talking yeah. about intersectionality, uh -huh. right? We have to add. Yes, you have the labor movement and you have the class struggle but you have to add the intersectionality to that, right? Right. To make sure that everybody can be lifted up, not just the class struggle, right? Because people are going to get left by the wayside if you do that. 
regardless of, of which way you go, right, to lift everybody up, you have to do it with all voices, not just the labor the labor movement. Mm-hmm. So hopefully we hopefully we can build on that, you know, everywhere, but in the United States in particular, because that's where most of the labor action is happening. Although we've got that awesome stuff happening with uh, Tesla in is it Sweden, where the 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 plant workers for Tesla are on strike. And that I put, think it's sweet. Yeah, it's in Europe, Northern Europe somewhere. Um, they, in true Musk form, he's fucking with people that have <laughs> know more about, like, you know, the labor struggle and have more solidarity than anyone in the United States has, except for the capitalist class, of course. <laughs> And what it's done in, in Northern Europe with Tesla is the Tesla, the people that work on the Teslas in Northern Europe, and I think it is Sweden, they went, they went on strike. Then the people that's, um, I think it was like the, uh, like the, the cleaning staff and stuff. I think they've went on strike. The people that supply parts to the Tesla people went on strike. The people that are offloading ships in the ports in Sweden Enough. and elsewhere <clears throat> have went on strike. They're all in yes. it together to tell Tesla to get their shit together, right? And Musk in particular, obviously. Fuck yeah. <laughs> right? It's great. I, I love that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we we recently talked about Elon Musk just like in the context of Latin America because mm. uh, you remember his text, I think it was from like 2021 or 20, mm. or not not text, tweet rather, 2021 or 2022 where he said, we coup whoever we want in terms, uh, and he was talking about Bolivia in terms right. of their lithium reserves. Right. Ugh, for his batteries. Yeah. <laughs> yes. He just, you know, he just straight up says we coo whoever we want. Right. That's you know it's yeah, I mean it's it's nice <laughs> to see these these labor uprisings around the world. And yeah. it's um I I really do in terms of just like speaking about uh positivity. I really do think the the genocide in Gaza is a turning point for the world because globally, I mean, who the fuck backs Israel? Only the U.S. and a select Western, uh, a select few uh, Western European nations. Right. The world, everybody, and else. especially the Arab world, yep. is adamantly opposed to Israel. And yep. I think ultimately this is this is going to continue to bring an end to Western hegemony um, and the notion of, of American exceptionalism. It's going to put a dagger in the heart of people's minds that, that, yeah. that the United States is this fucking beacon of democracy. Right. Because, you know, we've been we've been banging the gavel for years talking about how obviously the United States is fascistic deeply in nature but to to the political normies out there and the to the people that don't necessarily pay attention to the things as much as we do i think it's becoming so apparent that people can no longer ignore it yeah 100 percent. i mean it's happening in real time in front of everybody right yeah, I mean, this is like the Vietnam yeah. War in terms of like the the media coverage and just like the, right. the sheer atrocities that that people are being exposed to. I mean, definitely not in terms of like the Western media, but if you're like tuning into Al Jazeera, if you're like reading yep. details on on what's happening, you you are seeing the sheer uh, barbarism that's being perpetrated by the Israelis. Right. Yep. Yeah. Well, I you know, and I I hope you're right um about it being a turning point it certainly is in a lot of places right um we just had south africa come to the icj to file yeah. their to make their case uh against israel for what israel is doing with their genocide so it's uh you know someone else signed on with signed on to that who was it another country signed on with south africa i can't remember and their evidence is damning by the way yeah and even if nothing comes out of it if they can expose this on a wide scale i think that's still a win even if if they can do anything to slow down the military operation right yeah you know it's the, it's huge 
yeah and you know hopefully it's gonna amount to a, a ceasefire permanently like the idea that people are gonna go to jail for it that's not gonna happen <laughs> right most no, likely no Did you maybe hear about some the... low level like israeli like military right. I'll, and i'll keep this i'll keep this quick because i know heather wants to say something but i know that when, when bush was president he actually passed a, a law an official law that states that if any u.s generals um or any u.s diplomats are held responsible for war crimes they have a policy of invading the Netherlands, like literally invading the Hague. I think I heard that within the last couple months. That's just bonkers. Just so bonkers. Ugh. You know, and I think that the thing about this, too, is like, like, this is all happening in an era of social media. So I think like, <laughs> right, your right. point. Like, this is where you see the double-edged sword of social media, right? Because mm -hmm. there's so much that's bad about it, and it's so toxic, and there's so much misinformation. But to your point, Jordan, about, like, this is just, like, Vietnam with the media coverage. Like, people would not know about what is going on to the scale that they know without TikTok. Yep. Or right. Instagram. or And so it's, like, Right. Or the it's like the literally <laughs> hundreds of journalists now that have risked their lives yeah. e exposing yeah. what's going on. Yep. Um yeah. I mean in in we're we're talking about some journalists who have had their entire bloodlines wiped out. Yep. I also just wanted to add, I think I really, you know, getting to that like positive note, uh, I, I so appreciate podcast episodes like this, where, like, I know towards the end, we've been talking about all these other issues, but they start with like, like learning, you know, because yep. I think nobody learns shit anymore. <laughs> yep. And, and I, I just, I so appreciate like, the opportunities to learn and to highlight like people that we didn't know about right that yep. that had an impact stories that we yep. can actually like look at and draw from and say like holy shit like that's totally applicable to what's going on now like it makes yep. sense you know mm -hmm. um and so i just i really appreciate like people continuing to do these kinds of things like podcasts and like like you know just talking about these things because uh because it i think it's what's needed and i think it's what's going to get us through a lot of these other struggles so yeah totally agree yeah thank you for sure. that heather yeah, yeah. Thank you. that's great no you're i think you're right spot on about that hey thank you guys very much i appreciate this um it was no bullshit what i just said this is informational for me very fun and, uh, you know, I enjoyed learning this, learning from you and, and chatting about, especially what we talked about at the end is kind of, uh, you know, it's therapeutic, right? I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. The yeah. community that I found <laughs> among the left and as it continues to expand, just really helps me deal with all the pain and suffering in the world. Right. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. 100%. I saw uh I've seen a couple of posts. I don't know if it was tweets or what it was, but uh you know, it's it's from uh from a psychiatrist or psychologist or something and they they say something to the effect of all these people coming to me, you're not looking for therapy, you're looking for revolution. <laughs> and yes. I I feel awesome. that I feel that so much <laughs> because it's like there's only so much talking you can do, right? I appreciate you guys' time. This is great. Awesome. Thanks again, Craig. Bye. That does it for the show. Don't forget to rate and review on whichever platform you use to listen. Special thanks to Nick Josephs for the use of the theme song. You can find Nick on Spotify and on the web at nickjosephs.com. You can find me on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. If you'd like to support the show... You can subscribe on patreon.com slash voices from the left 
or donate on buymeacoffee.com slash voices from the left. All the links will be in the show notes. Thanks for listening and solidarity. Solidarity.